this is my custom Aurora R1 ALX. I'm making a series of videos about this case and computer, essentially, um, because I think that there's not a lot of resources out there on these things when it comes to actually upgrading them and changing the parts and essentially things like the motherboard, getting everything working. Um, people are essentially having to rely on on YouTube, there's only like one video and it's like almost 10 years old. And that's a good video, Don't it actually covers some things, but very basically, uh, it's very basic. It doesn't actually cover the nitty gritty stuff or actually like plugging in essential components and it actually does some things wrong. And so I thought that it, there needs to be a resource on YouTube where you can go check out like how to change stuff with this case and everything. Um, there is, of course, other places online where I've gotten this in for myself uh, and trial and error and stuff to get this to work. Um, and yeah, for anyone who wants to do this like I did, this video is for you. It's dedicated to you. Uh, it's also dedicated, I think, uh, a bit to my childhood self who always wanted a computer like this. Um, and wanted, I've been wanting to do this project for like seven years and now I'm actually doing it. So, you know. Uh, it's kind of documenting this entire journey, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and you know, that's just it. Uh, when I was a kid, Alienware uh, was essentially, for me, what stood as gaming PC. I was like, gaming PC equals Alienware, that was it. Um, which is wrong, <laughs> but as a kid, that was always the thing. Uh, this just alien design, this fence, everything about the Aurora, um, it just screamed coolness to me. And I still think it does. It's a really cool case. I, I really do think so. Um, and essentially, I managed to get my hands on one of these, I think two years ago now, a little less maybe. Uh, I got my hands on one of these through my, uh, through an acquaintance who essentially has used this in a very high-end government-grade simulator for airplanes and they got rid of it and I bought it very cheaply. I got the entire system for like $50 um, and yeah, it was just crazy. <laughs> uh, I, I just, you know, I got it and I serviced around with it, fixing it up um, and I could get the original configuration working. But then I always wanted to like put my main PC in here and now I finally did it. And it's just sort of a dream country for me. The fact that I got everything working as well is the coolest part. Uh, and yeah, as I said, I really want to dedicate this to everyone who uh, wants to go on, uh, you know, go do this themselves. We can find anything on YouTube. I need, I want there to be a resource on YouTube where you can like find this stuff and like understand what this is, how it works, how you would go about rebuilding it and everything. Um, so I think the next part is actually taking a look inside and kind of telling you about the case and, well, the build in itself and how it works and what you should do with it. This video is that this thing is heavy, uh, really heavy. It's it's insane actually. It is very heavy, as I said. Um, it ha might have some problems here with this drive bay in the front. It goes down, it's very loose. It doesn't really fit here with the hatch. It's, it doesn't really stick. Uh, otherwise, you know, what you can tell just by looking at it is extremely elongated, like this. This is an MATX case, by the way make of that what you want. <laughs> uh, they clearly weren't using the MATX motherboard because it was a smaller option. Definitely not. Um, this is what it looks like from the front. As you can see, it's extremely wide. That mainly has to do with the side panels being very wide. Uh, the side panels are essentially like, you know, this thick on both sides, which makes it, well, you know, extremely wide, uh, as I've said. It is quite an interesting piece in that sense that they decided to go with MATX because they didn't want it even bigger. Um, 
which is, you know, an interesting way to look at things. And like most computers that you buy from like a store are going to be MATX. Like if you're buying a desktop PC, you're buying it from a store like or Dell or whatever, it's probably going to be MATX. And I guess this is the same philosophy here. Uh, so let's see. If we switch this around here, we have the actual, uh, see the fans here? And then, well, I think we should start getting into this. Maybe. So if we switch this around, you can see that there is the lighting here. We have all the lights on. Now they are turned off. Um, and we also have the ventilation active vents up here. And well, I think it's time to start looking at some of the other features. For example, the USB ports up here. Now to open the case and whatnot. So uh, yeah, come along. So uh, starting at the front here, we of course have the uh, panel here. We should push the alien head. It comes down, reveals the drive bay. I'm not going to do that because this thing uh, tends to I don't really sit very well, it doesn't sit that tight, so it just drops off all the time, so I don't want to bother with that. But um, if you check uh, up here, so back here you have this flap here, and when you press it down like this, uh, it reveals all the I.O. And the design behind, the philosophy behind this is that it's gonna drape down the sides. It's gonna fall back where it's draped down the sides so it doesn't obscure the bay, um, which is a nice idea. It's just one of those small things that they thought about, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's the IO area. It has firewire uh, right there, which is kind of funny. Think about that was even a thing. So this, yeah, this is an old case. So we of course have the uh, vents here, you know. Around the back here, this gets uh, a little interesting. There's a lot of stuff to talk around here in the back. First thing, you know, Kensington lock here, fairly standard. Um, as you can see, I have, this is my custom MSI motherboard, um, or custom, well, it's just off the shelf MSI motherboard um, with the Wi-Fi stuff here. So you can see that it's not ailing where it is actually like MSI. Uh, if we go down and check uh, here, there's a small button here somewhere, right there. If I press this, this here lights up. And you know, see, this is not connected. It's a, there's just actual battery inside this case. The stores energy, which you can use to light this up, this IO port up, so that whenever you're at a LAN party, for example, you get these personal flight where you can like, you can plug everything in, you see where you're going, which is very nice. Um, down here is the power supply. We'll talk a little bit more about that with the latest, pretty interesting. Um, this time lock. Here we have something. This is the actual lock for the PC. Uh, now that this is to this way, you can't get inside the door. We just slide this to the left, and then you grab here and you just grab up here. Just lift that up like a spoiler on a car, and lift the side panel off. There you go. We're inside. So here we have the insides of the Aurora LX. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's actually lights inside of this PC here as well, right? The spotlights up here shining down, so you can actually see what you're doing. Even down here at the hard drives, you can see what you're doing when you're upgrading everything. Um, as you can see, these are empty. Uh, that's because I don't use the hard drives, I use SSDs. I haven't figured out a good way to mount these in here yet. I'll probably be doing that for the rebuild. But yeah, so you can see the PC is designed in a very particular way. Way. There's essentially three zones. You have, uh, it's built on the philosophy of essentially air ducts, which is kind of odd, uh, but it has an air duct down here, and then a cooling zone or an air duct here, and then one up here. So it's divided into these three pieces, and it kind of does this uh, in two ways. Down here, it's like actually sealed. You see there's a top and there's a bottom where then it seals like this, and you know you have air passing through here over to the power supply. And yes, this is the original Aurora Air uh, ELX power supply this came with. It's actually 875 watt silver uh, rated, which is really good. Um, and it's new old stock. So yes, this has been in storage for like a long while, but it has never been used before. Once I actually put the new one in, I had one, uh, like a, I had another one and it works very well. Um, it's really great. Uh, 
So yeah, here we have the GPU. We're gonna get to that later, because that's like the most interesting part. But down here, you can see something interesting. This here is a, uh, this here is a fan. Uh, you can actually pull this out somehow. I'm not exactly sure how, but yeah, you can pull this out. And once you do pull it out, you will see that this is essentially uh, a fan here to the MIO board, which is back here, Master and Pedal board, um, which connect back here. Um, and this fan is supposed to cool the hard drives. And you know, they have all these different fans. They have one small here, which is supposed to cool the RAM on the MITX version. Now I have an MITX board here, so that's why it's not covered yet. I actually left that in, but I don't think it's, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's being used right now. I don't think it is. Um, because that connects to this wire, which is supposed to go into the uh, CPU fan of the motherboard, and I didn't want to do that because I didn't. I want my fan to connect directly to the motherboard. Just thought that was safer. Um, so, well, let's check it out. We have here the GPU sound. Yeah, this latch here, which you open up to reveal this. Uh, here I have my RX Vega 56. Pretty good card. I just got it recently, um, like half a year ago. Works very well. It's the Airboost version, so it's a blower style card, which I like. I prefer blower style, call blower style cards because I think they work um, better in more cases, but they are also, yeah, louder. But when I had this in an old Acer Predator case instead, it worked very well. Um, so, yeah, here's the card. Everything connects here. Um, and then we can check. Uh, I guess the one of the most important parts is the connections to the actual it, like Aurora stuff. So if you check um, a little bit closer here, we have some key parts here to check out. So what I want to tell you about now is the wiring, which is pretty special. But if we start with the wiring here, this blue plug is the uh, JSP, you know, start button, everything. It's in this blue block, but it's just like, it's like the same layout as everything else, so it doesn't matter. It's, it's gonna work anyway, so just plug it into your board and you'll be fine. Um, and that's like one of the key components to getting this case working when it comes to wiring. So the next part we need to look at here to understand how the case is designed is this here. This is a USB uh, connector that is essentially the one that connects to the MIO board. The master and put output board that controls all the lighting, all the fans and everything. Uh, it is just a standard USB 2.0 connector, uh, from what I can tell. And the only difference is that you can see there's a small tab on it, like down here, I think. We can't really see it right now, but you can identify it by just looking at that. And then you can also trace it back to like, you know, where it routes out towards the MIO board. So that's the second part, the second plug, which is important to get plugged in for this to work and to use this case. Uh, so in here I have my SSDs. Uh, there's three of them. They're just plugged in like this at the moment. I don't move the computer too much, so I'm not really worried about it. I might uh, actually try to fit them in like an actual place later. Right now they're just there. Also, this isn't plugged in at the moment. I want to fix that because there's a mobile connector here. You can use that to plug into a SATA port and or make it into a SATA port and connect it to this and then just plug that in. So that's going to happen in the uh, coming build uh, in the future when I get my new uh, Ryzen parts and everything. So yeah, that's basically the drive situation at the moment. Here you have this alien spine sort of cable management thing. Uh, it works pretty well. It's quite a tidy case actually. There's a lot of you know, <laughs> mustard and ketchup going on with the cables, but otherwise it's actually pretty fine. So yeah, that's there. And if we have a look, so this is one of the uh, cooling zones I was talking about, you know, it goes through like this. And then you have the other one, which is here with the GPU. So the idea is that this GPU, the RX 560 here, um, together with this GPU shroud and this uh, fan mount here and this here, creates sort of an air zone. See, this blocks off the air here from escaping, this blocks off the air down here, and this blocks off from the side. So the idea is that it will get like forced through the uh, actual graphics card. Uh, now, I think that actually would work better if this wasn't a blower style card. Um, so if this was an open fan solution, 
This would actually work better, I think. But yeah, it's sort of a neat idea. Don't know how good it is in practice, but yeah, it's it's an idea at least. So down here we have a weird thing, this is the power supply. Uh, the power supply, from what I can tell, is actually pretty standard when it comes to mounts. In the back, you have this sort of mounting device that you need to first, like some MIT, MITx cases have. You have this mounting device that you have to screw onto the power supply itself and then mount it in the case, and I think it's the same here. You have this big pin here. This is actually a modular case, you can, or modular power supply. You can take out this pin and just take out the power supply itself, but uh, it's just one big pin, so it doesn't mean that you can choose what connections you need which kind of sucks. But yeah, it's an 875 watt, uh, 8 plus silver, um, new old stock. So, you know, it's good. Got it with the Alienware as a replacement part. So it, it's never been used before I made this build. So that's really good. Down here, you can see the hard drive cages. Uh, these sort of spring out here on the, I think it's this exclusive to the ALX version. I actually had some trouble with these getting, uh, you know, pushed out and they would push out the side panel when you went to push it back on and the lighting, the lighting connectors, which are over here, wouldn't connect anymore. So you need to make sure that these are always in. And sometimes you have to like physically drag this out the side just just click in. Down here, we also have another fan. I haven't disconnected this fan yet, even though I've disconnected basically all other fans in the case at the moment. I haven't disconnected this one, but I just put it manually to like a low RPM of like 5%, so it doesn't make any sound. And you don't really need it, because I'm not cooling anything down here anyway, so whatever. Um, and that's basically this zone. You can, I'm gonna try to use uh, mounting uh, utilities for uh, 3.5 to 2.5. Uh, you know, SDs instead of hard drives, but you know, it's uh, I'm gonna try that because I think it might work. The only problem is if we look at the back here. So, one of the problems is that if we look at the back here, these have this is these full size SATA plus SATA power connectors, which you're supposed to like, you're supposed to just slide it in and it connects. But these are SATA 2, and that doesn't really do it for me, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that uh, better. I'm gonna use these drive cages. So next up we have this here. This is actually a fan spot, but also a mounting place for the graphics card. Just like Mac does, uh, Alienware had these mounting brackets on the original uh, GPU that came with it that connect straight into this, so you can just sort of slide in and it sits securely, which is nice, but it also limits what, uh, what you can do with the GPU when it's out of the system, so I had to actually cut mine up. Um, but yeah, let's see if we can uh, remove some of the shroud. We have removed the um, graphics card shroud already. So let's see if we can get uh, this one here. So we have two clips that we have to clamp down on to get this removed. And then this is actually connected by some sort of cable. I actually don't know what this does. So I try not to mess with it too much. But then we can disconnect this. And in here we find the master input output port. The fabled piece that makes Alienware so special and also kind of weird to work in. So as you can see, this is actually a fairly large board. If I put up my hand to this, it's kind of big. It's not big, big, but it's sort of like a low tier, like a budget graphics card in size. Um, essentially everything in here connects here, as you can see by the total rat's nest. But the only thing you really need to keep, you shouldn't really not plug out any of this, which is in here. All you need to do is just plug in the supply that came with it, there should be a cable, a USB 2 cable coming out of here that you uh, plug in to the motherboard, as I said before, also that blue plug, uh, which is the case uh, lighting and things like that. And getting these plastic shrouds on is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is first get the fan mount in there, just snap it in place, then you just sort of get this in here, and that should fit into place really nicely as well. The last but not least, you just put the GPU in there. Alright, and that's basically the plastic shrouds. So next, the motherboard situation and the cooler situation. At the moment, uh, this is a, if I'm correct, this is a 120 millimeter slot here. We can put a 120 millimeter fan. 
So I'm going to do, because I'm going to put an AIO cooler in here uh, together with this, because now it's just a stock cooler on this i5-7400. And you know, I want it to be a little bit uh, cooler. I, I've never really used AIO coolers that much, so I decided I could just splurge on one now. Uh, just to try, you know. Uh, when it comes to the actual fan situation, on the OG Alienware, on the actual Alienware parts, when it comes to cooling, you have this array up here where you basically plug all the cooling stuff into and then it just masters everything with an MIO board. However, I did not want to risk that because I don't want a 10 year old component controlling my brand new motherboard and everything and potentially failing or, you know, bugging out because it's not Alienware stuff and, you know, Dell stuff. So what I decided to do is I decided to just essentially let this be as it is. I just plugged in my, you know, everything to the motherboard. Same with that. And as of course, I don't have like uh, any fans plugged in at the moment to like the system fan header, but you know, you could do that. Otherwise it's very standard. It's surprisingly standard to build in this thing. It's not really a big problem. There's, from what I gather, there's more than enough space to mount an AIO cooler in the back. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, and you know, it sort of all the mounts are standard. They're really rugged. Uh, they are made out of steel, <laughs> uh, the actual mounts. I can zoom in on one here so you can see it. So let's see if we can get you from out here. So as you can see, that's a mount right there for the motherboard. Solid steel connected directly into the case, which is actually really nice. So yeah, that's actually it. Um, when you look at it at first, everything seems very unstandard when you open it up for the first time. But actually getting everything hooked up is just a regular computer. Uh, it's just a regular MATX case, which, some, which has some fancy features. And I think that's a really good thing because that means that I can uh, essentially you know, look at everything, get everything hooked up without there being any like struggle of having like specific Alienware parts, which makes this actually a pretty good building experience. However, there are a bunch of cables in this case, How, uh, but the cables are actually very, or pretty well at least cable managed. So it isn't that big of an issue, but you know, just to keep that in mind, I'd say. Uh, but yeah, I highly recommend actually building this. It's not that difficult. So. Now that we looked at the actual uh, computer, let's get on into where I found this information and some of the software side of things. All right, so let's get into more of the software side of things and also how I figured out how to do this anyway. It actually all comes down to one forum. Um, forums, you know, with the centralization of the internet, I counted that out. But there is one community that I really like, which is not on Reddit or Facebook or whatever that's left. This is the Alien Owners Forum. Alien Owners Forum is a place where everyone who owns or is interested in Alienwares to essentially come and talk about Alienwares, fix their, get like opinions on what to do with them, um, how to fix them up, everything. Uh, and it's really good. They give so much info on everything from like how to plug in your stuff to what, you know, what the different small differences between the cases, you know, upgrade paths, everything. And I just love reading through everything of it. And there's been one user in particular that has been super helpful called uh, Cass Olay. Now, I don't know, I think it's from France or something. I'm not sure. But for example, I asked this question here, which is Aurora ALX liquid cooler directly into board? because I wanted to use the old parts for another computer, right? And I basically asked, well, how do I connect it as a proprietary connector? So how would I connect it to a modern board or to directly to the board? And he sent me this, like a full page answer with diagrams, pictures, everything. And I was just blown away by essentially, you know, uh, how much he talked about it. It was actually really nice. Um, and he gave me this really good answer on how to do it. And, you know, when you look at all the other questions that people have, like, oh, will this motherboard work with this? And what version of Alienware command center should I use? He knows it, he knows it all, which is great. Uh, or she, I don't know if it's she. Uh, but essentially, uh, this is really good. So thank you, Kas Ole, for all the info. 
Um, and I highly recommend you, if you have an Alienware, go visit this forum, or if you're just interested in them. I mean, it's, it's really cool guys up there. So the next thing after actually figuring out, uh, so, so the first thing I wanted to figure out when it came to this is how do I put in a standard motherboard in the case? And essentially reading around, it's just standard, you just screw it in, it's just everything um, actually mounts as it should. Um, and then, well, how do I turn it on? Well, here's where things get fucky. See, I had watched, a long time ago, I watched a tutorial where a guy was building in an uh, Aurora case, and he spliced the blue plug that went into the motherboard, um, but you don't need to do that. It's a JSP1 connector, so it just plugs in directly into any motherboard, so it's not a problem. Uh, or JF JFP1, is it JFP1 or JSP1? It's one of those. It just connects directly to most motherboards, and it should be fine. You just put the plug in, and you're good to go with that. And then I read uh, about you know how to connect the lights and, and get the lights working and everything. And it's actually pretty simple as well. All you need to do is you need to connect the USB that I showed you inside the computer into the motherboard. And then you need to download a specific uh, software called Alienware Command Center. Alienware Command Center is a software that they use to control lighting, fan speeds, the flaps that are on my Aurora ALX and things like that. Like all the custom Alienware stuff is directly controlled by a command center. And uh, essentially what I've heard is that command center has had some problems installing on custom motherboards, on non-Alienware motherboards. And while that is true, it's actually not that big of a deal because there's an old version of the software uh, version 2.8.9 that still works on Windows 10 and everything uh, that actually just uses, you know, it works with any motherboard. So you're not getting all the features and everything, and not like the latest version, but it works with any motherboard. And so if you want to install uh, a version without any hassle, it's 2.8.9. Remember that. Version 2.8.9 of Alienware Command Center. Really good version to use. Uh, after that, you have. If you want to upgrade the version, you can go up to all the way to like 4.4, I think. But what you need to do then is actually way more complicated. You would need to copy over the BIOS key from an Alienware motherboard that the system came with, and then enforce that key onto your new motherboard so that when you go to installing, you trick the new installs for the new version that you are actually using an OEM motherboard. Which, you know, is one way to do it, but it just felt like way too much of a hassle for me. I just want to get the lights working, and that's it. And I managed to get them working, so, you know, it worked out. So, essentially, that's the biggest two things, is connecting all the hardware correctly into inside the case, and then downloading the right version and installing Command Center. Um, it worked fine with Windows 10 for me, no problem. And otherwise, it was just as simple as connecting all the parts and, you know, just getting everything working. So, yeah. Shout out to Alien or, owner, or Alien Owners Forum, as well as Castle Lake. Thank you very much. So yeah, that is essentially just how I got everything working with the computer. Uh, it was actually kind of easy, and now I have an Aurora ALX R1 custom build with custom motherboards, CPU, everything. Uh, and yeah, it's actually super simple. Everything works as it should. So I thought. Why not show you some benchmarks on the current system? Because when we upgrade this, we're gonna change everything, all the parts out, see what it does. Try it on an AIO cooler, and I just wanna show you guys how it performs at the moment. Spoiler alert, it's not that great. The i5 CPU is kind of bottlenecking the RX Vega 56. Uh, so, you know, not that great, but it, it, it's okay. Uh, and so I thought, you know, let's just uh, show you where we're at in this situation. So, I'm gonna benchmark some games, probably like a couple. I don't know which yet. Uh, but yeah, that'll be evident soon. So, yeah, let's benchmark some games.
so as you can see here while playing Heroes and Generals, my CPU is at 100%, 100% of the time, and my GPU is kind of showing at around 60, 60%, 70%? Uh, well, there's kind of a bottleneck in the system, as you can see. In the benchmark there we got some pretty decent numbers we got uh here's the generals uh average of 95 uh minimum of 45 or 54 and a max of 199 and the thing is i think there's some micro stuttering going on or stuttering because my cpu is also at 100 percent because my gpu is kind of falling around 70 70 percent when it's at the most usage usually that drops like two usually that's like at 50 percent so yeah there's some it's definitely a bottleneck with the CPU going on, at least in that game. CSGO, same thing, 200 most of the time, minimum 38. That was when I went into the smoke, and what's really weird that happened there is that the CPU uh, actually went down to like 20% usage, and the GPU just shot up, uh, which is weird. Uh, so I don't know what that, that's all about. Um, you would think that smoke would be something that would maybe be calculated by CPU more, but I don't know. B4 at the test range, I couldn't find a match because it's really early in the morning here and it's a weekday. Uh, an average of 169, minimum of 99, and max of 201. Pretty okay, definitely playable. Temple 2, average of 127, minimum of 38, max of 145. Like, these are all playable, um, but it could be better. And I think that's the main part why I want to get a Ryzen processor. But yeah, the benchmarks are okay, but yeah, definitely we can see some improvement here. So to round up here, this first episode of the documentary, we've uh, looked a little bit about at the PC, about uh, how it is, like custom building it, what the prospects are, what you need to think about, things like that. Um, how it performed, a little bit about the software side of things, also thanks to the Alien Owners Forum. Uh, so yeah, it's the first part in the documentary, probably going to be two more parts. So the next one is going to be where we look at what happened to the parts after the computer, that we took out of the computer. Third part is probably going to be when we upgrade it, and the parts are on their way, so relatively soon. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find some use for it, especially if you're building a PC like this, that you'd actually like see something in here that's actually good to know. Um, so yeah, 
Thank you guys. Uh, and uh, have a good one. See ya.